Well, good morning, everybody. We are uh, doing something a little bit different this morning with our uh, Thursday morning Bible studies with the Wesley House Assisted Living Community. Um, a little, well, right out about a year ago, it's been just short of a year ago, we started doing um, weekly Bible studies at the Wesley House Assisted Living Community in Gainesville, Texas, and we were doing them every Thursday morning at 1030, and we had gone through um, several different series that we were working on, and uh, as everybody knows, with all of the things that have taken place in our country with the coronavirus, uh, those Bible studies had to stop, and it's been about three weeks since we've been able to do it. Well, thankfully, with the uh, advent of the technology that we have and the abilities that we have through the internet now, we've decided we're going to kick off and start these Bible studies once again. So I want to welcome everybody that's here with us this morning, particularly my folks from Wesley House. I miss you terribly bad. Um, I wish I could be there in person. I really do. We find ourselves in a very interesting place in our country's history right now, and it's a, it's a difficult time for all of us, and I know it's an especially difficult time for you all. You uh, can't see loved ones as much as you would like. Um, <clears throat> you can't have the visitors that you typically have. This Bible study was one of the victims of that, but um, we are overcoming that. We're overcoming it today with the, uh, with the help of the technology that we have. So we are excited that we are able to do this. Now, this Bible study is, like I said, it is primarily designed for um, my family at the Wesley House. I, I love you guys and I miss you guys. And if you'll notice on the, on the screen, and I want to apologize for our projector that's up there, it, uh, it blocks part of the screen. When we installed that projector, it was long before we ever imagined that we would be live streaming or have a camera that was mounted the way that it is. And uh, in the future, we're planning on moving the projector up so that it won't cover up part of the screen. But if you notice up on the screen there, we have been studying with my friends at Wesley House the life of David for uh, quite some time, for the last few months. And this morning, we're going to pick up really kind of where we left off with the life of David. And um, as I said before, I'm, I'm tickled that I have the opportunity to still get into Wesley House and see you guys, not see you guys, but talk to you guys. You guys can see me. Um, I hear great reports about you. You know, Brenda comes home every night and tells me how well you're doing. And, uh, but I do want you to know, um, my family at Wesley House, I, I love you guys very much. I miss you very much. But we shall get through this, and there will be a day again when we are all together, and uh, we'll, we'll have a great time. And let's go ahead and start with our Bible study this morning. But before we do that, Let's start out with a word of prayer. So if you're gathering at Wesley House, if you are at home and joining in with us in the Wesley House uh, with this Bible study this morning, join us for a word of prayer. Bow with me, please. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this technology that we have, that even in times like this, when, when we're separated, we can still be together. And Father, I want to pray this morning on behalf of... Uh, the residents at Wesley House, they're, they're like family to us. We love them so much. And Father, I just want to pray on their behalf and ask that you would be with them, that you would continue to give them strength and courage during this time, that you would still any anxieties or fears that they might have. Father, we know that you are in complete control of everything that happens in this life. And, and Lord God, we are so thankful for that. And we just ask that you would continue to be with them. Lord, we pray for any of those at, at Wesley House or anywhere else that are having physical difficulties. Father, we lift them up to you in prayer. We just ask that you would reach your healing hand down and touch them, that they would be restored to their health. Father, we ask that you would be with us in this country through this most difficult time. We, we find ourselves in uncharted territory. And while it may be uncharted territory for us and we may... Uh, feel like we're grasping in the dark right now. Father, we know that it's not uncharted territory for you. And we know that you hold the future in your hands. You hold this entire world in your hands. And Father, we give everything to you. So Lord, be with us this morning as we go through this Bible study. Help us to open our hearts and our minds to your word. Help us to be encouraged by your word, strengthened by your word, and, and, and know that we can face the days ahead because we have your word and we have your promise. So, Father, be with us through this Bible study. Be with all of those that 
need you at this time. And, and when we fall short of you, Father, we always want to come to you and ask for forgiveness for any sins that we, have made, that we may have committed. We just ask that you would help us to come before you today with a clean heart. It's in Jesus Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Okay, so we are going to uh, get going here and see what we have happening. Our story so far, where we're at, um, we want to go ahead and try to get a little bit of background on what's going on because this is the 13th part of what we have been studying in the life of King David. Um, our story so far... King David is uh, well advanced in years. He has got to a point in his life where um, he is actually nearing the end of his life. Now, during this life, he's had a life of happiness, a life of sadness, a life of war, and a life of peace. In other words, he's had a life just like all of us have. Good times, bad times, easy times, difficult times. Um, King David was chosen by God at a very early age, if you remember King David was handpicked by God to become the king when he was just a boy, when he was really just a, a, a young man. He was a, a, a sheep herder taking care of his father's sheep. But King David knew, or God knew, that King David was going, uh, that this young boy David was going to be king and that he was a man after God's own heart. As a young man, we all remember the story of David and Goliath. David defeated the Philistine giant Goliath which gave him great fame and raised him up in the eyes of all of Israel. He had to go to war against King Saul, who was at that time the first king of Israel, and David defeated Saul's army, and then he became king. He had personal failings with women, as we've all heard the story of King David and Bathsheba and the failings that he had there. We saw where King David sinned with Bathsheba and also sinned in many other ways. Again, as we are all human beings, even the heroes of the Bible have their failings. He also had personal failings within his family. He had some difficulties there. He had a son named Amnon uh, who had a half-sister named Tamar who Amnon had a crush on Tamar and actually took advantage of her. And if you remember that story, Tamar's full brother, Absalom, was so furious by what took place that he had his half-brother Amnon killed. So David had a lot of personal failings and a lot of dysfunction within his own family. Then we saw where David went through his life and several times had to put down rebellions. And one of those rebellions was actually by Absalom, his own son, who rebelled against David and tried to take his crown. And then the last time we came together, Wesley family, was the beginning of this month and we saw where David had gotten older and at this point, David had gone out to fight really what was going to be his last battle. David went out and fought against the Philistines. Once again, there's war between the Philistines and the Israelites. David goes out to fight in the battle. And lo and behold, if the last battle that David doesn't fight in, we find him again fighting against a Philistine giant. All those years before when he fought against Goliath, which was his first battle with the Philistines, all these years later, in his older life, his last battle again is fought against a Philistine giant. And we saw where all throughout David's life, it always came back to the fact that David always came back to God. Whenever David had these failings, whenever he had these faults and he had these problems, David would always repent and come back to God again. And that's the story of all of us, really. We have these lives where we have failings and where we have faults and and where things go wrong sometimes, and, and what we need to do is, as David did, come back to God during those difficult times. So we are looking at David's last days now. David is much older, and it's coming to the close of his life. He has gotten to a point in his life where his health is failing. He spends much of his time in his chambers in bed. And it doesn't take long before someone sees the weakened state of the king and they look at it as an opportunity. And sadly, the person that does that is another one of David's sons. And he sees David's weakened state and his, uh, his declining health as an opportunity for him to take the throne. So what we're going to do this morning is we're going to look at about four different passages in 1 Kings and in 2 Kings, and in the book of 1 Chronicles. And we're going to learn some lessons from 
really the end of David's life. We've had this long series on David for 13 weeks now, and we're going to wrap that up with this 13th part at the end of David's life and look at some lessons that we can learn from the end of that life. But before he gets to the end of that life, he has to deal with one more issue, and that is the son that is coming up and taking advantage of his father's ill health. So look with me, if you have your Bibles, you can turn them over to 1 Kings, and the first place that we're going to read this morning is 1 Kings chapter 1, we're going to start in the fifth verse. Now Adonijah, whose mother was Haggith, put himself forward and said, I will be the king. So he got chariots and horses ready with 50 men to run ahead of him. His father had never interfered with him by asking, Why do you behave as you do? He was also very handsome and was born next after Absalom. Adonijah conferred, conferred with Joab, son of Zariah, and with Abiathar the priest, and they gave him their support. But Zadok the priest, Benaiah the son of Jehodiah, Nathan the prophet, Shimei and Rei, and David's special guard did not join Adonijah. Adonijah then sacrificed sheep, cattle, and fattened calves at the stone of Zoleth near Enragel. He invited all his brothers, the king's sons, and all the men of Judah who were royal officials. But he did not invite Nathan the prophet, nor Benaniah, nor the special guard, or his brother Solomon. So here we've got the plot coming forward. What we have is Adonijah, who was David's fourth-born son. He was born immediately after Absalom. And the Bible tells us that Absalom was David's favorite son, and it kind of leads to an idea that Adonijah was David's second favorite son, which out of all of David's sons, it's funny that his favorite was one that led a rebellion against him. His second favorite was one who was trying to usurp the throne when he sees his father's weakened condition. He sees the opening in his father's physical weakness as a way for him to take the crown, and he takes advantage of that. Now, with the backing of some of David's highest officials, what Adonijah does is he literally goes out and crowns himself king. He offers up sacrifices, he goes through all of the steps, and he, he basically crowns himself as the king of Israel. Well, the fact is, the first lesson we can learn in this story is that in this life, difficulties come. There's just no way of escaping it. Difficulties are going to come when we're young, they're going to come when we're middle-aged, they're going to come when we're elderly. Difficulties in this life are going to come. We can't get around the difficulties that we have in this life. Here is David. Poor David, if anybody at, at this point in David's life, if anybody had the right to just relax and enjoy his golden years, it ought to be David. At this point in David's life, he has fought all of his wars, he has dealt with his sins, he has, he has strengthened the nation of Israel, he's defeated so many of his enemies, and you would think at this point in his life it would be nice if he could just have the opportunity to relax, have the opportunity just to enjoy his golden years, but it doesn't happen that way. He has this unexpected situation that arises, and it throws everything in turmoil. And the fact is, folks, in this life, we're going to have unexpected situations arise in our life. We're going to have things that come up that throw us into turmoil, that throw our whole lives into turmoil. There's just no getting away, away from it. This life has a habit of doing that. This world that we live in has a habit of throwing our life upside down sometimes. When we think everything's running along fine, we find ourselves in the blender. Jesus said over in John 16, 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. So you know, Jesus reminds us all the way back on the last night of his life when he would gathered together with his apostles, he had made this statement to them. He was comforting them, he was trying to encourage them, he was trying to strengthen them for the things that were going to come. And he tells them, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So, you know, folks, we're going to have trouble in this world. We're going to have unexpected things that happen in this world. We're going to have our world turned upside down sometimes. How many of us ever saw this coming? 
If you don't know what that is, that's the illustration of the coronavirus. The virus that has basically invaded the whole world seems like it has basically shut the whole world down. The reason that I'm standing here in this empty room talking to you over the internet is because of this. How many of us saw this a month ago when I was there at Wesley House in person and we were all together in the chapel having this Bible study? None of us saw this happening. None of us saw this coming up. But this is the way that life does it. Sometimes it just gives us unexpected turns. And Adonijah being David's second favorite son, Adonijah being someone that David surely loved because he was his son, surely David probably thought there's, there's no way that Adonijah would ever come and rebel against me or try to assert my authority or try to take my crown. But this is exactly what's taken place. David's reached a point in his life where he probably thinks he deserves to just have a little peace and quiet and have everything go smoothly. But unfortunately, that's not the way the world works. And all of us probably at times get in positions in our life where we, where we have everything running smooth and everything running good, and then all of a sudden it gets turned upside down. And folks, that's where we find ourselves right now, is that we find ourselves turned upside down. Well, what has happened here is Bathsheba, David's wife, and the mother of Solomon has heard about Adonijah's plan. Nathan, the prophet, has heard about Adonijah's plan. They have heard what Adonijah has done, that he has gone and that he has crowned himself king, that he has turned David's whole world upside down. What David knew as life yesterday is different than it is today. But Bathsheba and Nathan, they get together and they work out a plan. They know that Solomon should be the one to be the next king and that Adonijah is not the one to be the next king. So what, David, what Bathsheba and Nathan do is they get together and they say, we have to approach the king and we have to tell him what Adonijah has done. And we have to remind him of who it is that is supposed to be the next king of Israel, who is Solomon. So our second passage that we're going to look at this morning is 1 Kings, the first chapter, starting over in the 28th verse. Now Bathsheba and Nathan have gotten together. They have discussed this plan. Nathan has gone to the king and spoken to him about it. And now the king is going to call his wife Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, into his chambers. <laughs> then King David said, Call in Bathsheba. So she came into the king's presence and stood before him. The king then took an oath. As surely as the Lord lives, who has delivered me out of every trouble, I will surely carry out today what I swore to you by the Lord, the God of Israel. Solomon, your son, shall be king after me, and he will sit on my throne in my place. Then Bathsheba bowed low with her face to the ground, and kneeling before the king said, May my lord King David live forever. King David said, Call in Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada. When they came before the king, he said to them, Take your Lord's servants with you and set Solomon my son on my own mule and take him down to Gihon. There have Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet anoint him king over Israel. Blow the trumpet and shout, Long live King Solomon. Then you are to go up with him and he is to come and sit on my throne and reign in my place. I have appointed him ruler over Israel and Judah. Benaiah the son of Jehoiada said, to the king, Amen. May the Lord, the God of my Lord, the king, so declare it. As the Lord is with my Lord, the king, so may he be with Solomon to make his throne even greater than the throne of my Lord, King David. So here we have <clears throat> Bathsheba and Nathan have come to David. They've explained to David what Adonijah has done. David has called Bathsheba in and he has told Bathsheba, I have made you a promise that Solomon was going to be king. Now the fact is, Adonijah, even though he's gone out and, and proclaimed himself as king, he can't really proclaim himself as king as long as David is still alive. And David is the one who will appoint, and, uh, appoint the next king of Israel. And this is what David does. And he calls Zadok the priest and he says, here's what we're going to do. I want Solomon to be anointed and appointed as the king of Israel and of Judah. And that is exactly what takes place. Bathsheba comes to David 
and she reminds David of God's plan. It was Solomon, not Adonijah, that was supposed to be the king. Now this is our second lesson here. Folks, God is always in charge. Even when we live these lives that get turned upside down sometimes, like the life that we're living right now that's almost foreign to what we knew even a month ago, God is always in charge. Adonijah came in and he tried to turn the entire kingdom upside down. He tried to work his own means. And what happened is, is that God had Solomon already lined out to be the king of Israel. Look over with me in your Bibles, if you will, over to the book of 1 Chronicles. <coughs> Excuse me, I have had a cough all night last night, and I've been coughing all, all morning this morning. If you look over to 1 Chronicles, the 28th chapter, starting in the 5th verse, we're going to see where this promise was made by God. 1 Chronicles, chapter 28, starting in the 5th verse. Of all my sons, and the Lord has given me many, now this is David speaking, he has chosen my son Solomon to sit on the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. He said to me, Solomon, your son is the one who will build my house and my courts, and I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. I will establish his kingdom forever if he is unswerving and carrying out my commands and laws and is being done, that is being done at this time. You know, God had made a promise to David. And God had told David, this is who I have chosen to be the king after you, your son Solomon. Adonijah can throw all the kinks in it that he wants to. Adonijah can try to turn the world upside down as much as he wants. Adonijah can put his own crown on. Adonijah can offer sacrifices. Adonijah can cause problems within the family. He can cause problems within the kingdom. But the fact is, God is always in charge. And we find ourselves in a world today where we need to remember that God's plans will never fail, that God is always in control. We are upside down in this world today. It seems like the whole world has shut down and stopped. But we need to remember that God is in control. God was in control when Adonijah tried to step up and throw the whole kingdom into turmoil. And God is in control today with everything that's taking place. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? You know, and the author of Hebrews there was, was repeating the, the prophet from the Old Testament. And he says, we need to remember what God has said. In these difficult times when everything seems to be upside down and everything seems to be opposite of what it should be, and we find ourselves anxious, and we find ourselves afraid, and we find ourselves, you know, isolated, actually. We need to remember, God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Lesson number two, God is always in charge. And then if we go back to 1 Kings again, we look at the third part of this story. So we have Adonijah setting himself up, and he's trying to... He's trying to usurp the throne. He's trying to upset the kingdom. But we see where God is in charge and that God is going to line this out. And now King David has appointed Solomon as his king, as the next king. So over in 1 Kings chapter 2, starting in the first verse, it says, When the time drew near for David to die, he gave a charge to Solomon his son. I am about to go the way of all the earth, he said, so be strong. Show yourself a man and observe what the Lord your God requires. Walk in his ways and keep his decrees and his commands, his laws and his requirements as is written in the law of Moses, so that you may prosper in all that you do and wherever you go, and that the Lord may keep his promise to me, even if your descendants watch at how they live. And if they walk faithfully before me with all their heart and soul, you will never fail to have a man on the throne of Israel. And then if we jump over to verse 10, we see the end of David's life. Then David rested with his fathers and was buried in the city of David. He had reigned 40 years over Israel, seven years in Hebron and 33 in Jerusalem. So Solomon sat on the throne of his father David and his rule was firmly established. 
So we come to the end of David's life when David actually leaves this life. But before David leaves this life, he gives Solomon this charge. And that charge is follow God. Trust in God. Keep God's commandments. Do the things that God has told us to do. And if you do that, you'll be successful. And if your children do that, they will be successful. So number three, the third lesson that we learned this morning. Remember where our strength comes from. Right here at the end of David's life, David again comes back to God. David always came back to God. And here at the end of his life, his final words, he tells his son who's going to take the throne, you remember where your strength comes from, Solomon. You remember where you are going to get that strength to lead these people. You remember who it is that is in charge. To the end, David always knew where he got his strength. To the very end, David always knew where he got his direction. Now, did David step off of the path sometimes and make some drastic, very dramatic uh, 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 mistakes? He absolutely did. But the fact is, all of us do. But we have to remember where our strength comes from. And especially in days like this, when we find so much unknown and so much turmoil in our world, we need to remember where our strength does come from. The 121st Psalm is one of the most beautiful psalms in the Bible, and it's a great psalm that reminds us exactly of where our strength comes from. The psalmist writes over in the 121st Psalm, he reminds us of who we are. He says, I lift my eyes up to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. I will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not forget you in the slumbers. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber himself nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forever. You know, we just need to remember where our strength comes from. David faced many unknown challenges in his life, many challenges that just came out of nowhere. But David always remembered where his strength came from. And he passed that legacy on down to his son Solomon. Now, our fourth and final passage that we're going to look at this morning is over in the book of 1 Chronicles. 1 Chronicles, the 22nd chapter. 1 Chronicles, the 22nd chapter. Now, this is a passage where David is, you know, we, we just came to the end of David's life, but this is a passage where the Lord is telling David what kind of reign Solomon is going to have, what kind of kingdom Solomon is going to have. And over in 1 Chronicles, the 22nd chapter, starting in the 9th verse, it says, But you will have a son who will be a man of peace and rest, and I will give him rest from all of his enemies on every side, his name will be Solomon, and I will grant Israel peace and quiet during his reign. He is the one who will build a house for my name. He will be my son, and I will be his father, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. Now this is God telling David about Solomon years and years before. But he's telling David what kind of kingdom Solomon's going to have. And do you notice what he says in there? You will have a son who will be a man of peace and rest. I will give him rest from all of his enemies on every side. His name will be Solomon. I will grant Israel peace and quiet during his reign. And you know what? King Solomon's entire reign, that's exactly what happened. Solomon didn't have the problems with the enemies that David had. Now, he had his own problems and he had things that happened. But the fact is, during the reign of Solomon, you know what? Israel was at peace. They didn't have to fight any more wars. They didn't have to fight any more battles. They didn't have the problems that they had faced before. His reign was a reign of peace. And that brings us to our last lesson that we can learn this morning, folks, is that there are brighter days ahead. No matter what we face in this life, no matter what we have to deal with, no matter the turmoil that we have, no matter the anxieties that we have, no matter the fears that we have for the things that are happening in this life, Right here and now, there are brighter days ahead. God told David, you're going to have this son Solomon. 
Solomon's going to be a man of peace, and all of Israel is going to know peace, the entire reign of Solomon. And I want you to think about the king that we have sitting on the throne today, that there are brighter days ahead, and God is going to see to that. Solomon's reign was filled with peace and prosperity for all of the people. And our king that sits on the throne today, Jesus Christ, our king's reign, is right now, and there are brighter days ahead because he is in charge. I want to close this morning with one final passage from the prophet Isaiah. Over in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah the 40th chapter, starting in the 28th verse, and this is, this is a great passage for us during the times that we're going through right now, the things that we're facing. I want you to remember Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 through 31. And, and Wesley House family, I can only imagine the, the anxieties that you're feeling, the fears that you're feeling, but I want to promise you there are brighter days ahead, and we shall get through this. And the prophet Isaiah wrote over in Isaiah chapter 40, starting verse 28. He said, Do you not know, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God? the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired, tired and weary, and young men, they stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Family, there are brighter days ahead. Church, there are brighter days ahead. There are days ahead that God has promised us that will be filled with peace for those that choose to follow Him. Not just for the days of this world, but for an eternity. But in this world, in this life, I promise there are brighter days ahead. So as we go through our lives right now with all that we're dealing with, let's remember the things that we can learn from the end of King David's life. In this life, difficulties are going to come. We're just going to have to accept that. We know that. It's going to happen. But we also need to remember that God is always in charge. Folks, Satan may think he's having a heyday with this world right now, but he's not. He's reaching the end of his leash God only lets him go as far as God wants him to, and God is always in charge. We need to remember where our strength comes from, and it comes from God. And then finally, we need to remember, folks, there are brighter days ahead. And I look forward to the day that I get to come back up there and see all of my Wesley House family. I have missed all of you all dearly, and I look forward to the day that I get to come back up there and see you in person. And those days are coming. And it will happen. And we will celebrate when that happens. And until then, we thank God that He's given us the technology that we can do what we're doing. And even though we're apart, we're still together. So let's close this morning with a word of prayer. Bow with me, please. Lord God, we thank You so much for this day that You have given us and the opportunity this morning for us to come together and still study Your Word and encourage each other and strengthen each other because we know that we can be encouraged and strengthened by You. Father, let us go through this life as the Christians that we should be. We know that there are going to be difficulties and we know there are going to be issues and problems that we have to face. But Father, we just know that You are in control. Father, we know that your son reigns on the throne and we know that there are better days ahead. And Father, we give ourselves, our lives, and everything that we have to you and to your hands knowing that you're in control. Father, we want to pray one more time this morning for all of my family there at Wesley House, those residents that we love so much, Lord, not just them, but all the residents and all of the assisted living facilities, the nursing homes, the retirement centers who find themselves in in difficult positions now that they've, they've been isolated from those that they love. and Father, we just pray for them that you'll strengthen them and that you'll encourage them and, and that we can do anything that we can do to strengthen and encourage them. Father, I want to pray for all of those that toil in those communities. I want to pray for all the workers at Wesley House and the workers at all of the other uh, communities that we know that, that are toiling tirelessly to help these that are so precious to us. Lord, we just pray that you would continue to give them a heart of service and that, that they would continue to be there for them when we can't. 
Lord, we ask that you'd be with us as we conclude this Bible study this morning. Be with us through this week. Be with us in everything that we do. And Father, until we can come again together, we just ask that you would be with each and every one of us. It's in Jesus Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Again next week at 1030 Wesley House, we will see you then. Goodbye. <laughs>